What's up guys, Jam here. Today we'll be covering Chapter 6 of the Aganuif. Chapter 5 of the Aganuif ended with Beatrice arriving at Subaru's location. Chapter 6 takes place a couple of hours after Subaru and Betelgeuse's fight. Subaru opened his eyes, the sun was beginning to set and he had been out for a while. He recalls his bitter defeat against Betelgeuse earlier today. He was completely overwhelmed, 20 years to avenge Rem had gone in vain. Subaru then realizes that he feels much better compared to a couple of hours ago. It was all for nothing. Subaru begins to yell until he's interrupted by a voice. You're too noisy in fact. You're a noisy one from the minute you wake up, I suppose. Beatrice? Subaru couldn't believe what he was seeing. Did he finally lose his mind? No, he was already crazy a long time ago. After what he's been through, it's not strange to have hallucinations. Don't move. Your wounds are too severe for Betty to handle, I suppose. What the hell? As soon as Subaru became aware of it, he felt intense pain all over his body. He couldn't even move his head at all. Oh my god. That's why I told you not to move, in fact. I've closed your wounds to stop the bleeding, but it's a temporary fix, I suppose. Beatrice, why are you helping me? Beatrice quietly stares at Subaru, not saying a single word. Hey. The wound. I can't help you anymore. You're not gonna make it, in fact. Subaru was shocked at Beatrice's cold words. I'm not trying to save my life. But I can't die yet. I'm not ready to die yet. If Betelgeuse is alive, it's not over yet. That man must be killed. Beatrice sighs and shakes her head. I guess you can do whatever you want. Betty warned you, in fact. Beatrice begins to leave until Subaru stops her. Hold on. There's something I need you to tell me. If someone's body is destroyed, could their consciousness be transferred to another person? Is there such magic? Knowing that, what are you going to do, I wonder? It's obvious. Kill him. Don't make me say it over and over again. You're heavily wounded and dying, I suppose. I managed to get rid of the wounds, but your internal organs were torn apart, I suppose. What's wrong with my body? I have to kill that guy. I'm saying there is no point in living a life like that. You should find a more meaningful way in spending your time, I suppose. I know a healer who can bring a dead man back to life. If we can get to him, it should be fine. Where the hell are they, in fact? A treatment center on the outskirts of the royal capital. Petrash knows the location. Right now, I don't care about that. Betelgeuse died once, but he entered another human's body. If you know something, let me know. Transcription of the Soul Your enemy's true identity is an evil spirit, in fact. The human body that is being transferred is nothing more than a replaceable part to him, I suppose. I see, that's what the fingers are. Subaru's vision starts getting hazy, and then he blacks out once more. We see a cattier doctor helping an old man at a treatment center. You're fine now, but don't be too reckless. Thank you, Dr. Felix. Don't worry about it, it's what I do now. Ferris sighs and recalls how he feels that a hole had been left in the middle of his chest, like he was missing something. He's forgotten something incredibly important to him, but he can't figure out what it is. Ferris recalls how it took a toll on his psyche 20 years ago, crippling him back then. Over the past decade, he was able to learn how to deal with it, although there are still times where he loses track of who he is. Yeah, I'm sure I still don't understand. Ferris is interrupted by the loud roar of an earth dragon outside. Ferris rushes outside to see what was going on. A girl and a ground dragon? Hey, this is a treatment center. Some people are being hospitalized and sleeping, so keep quiet. Ferris then notices a man on the back of the dragon. Subaru? Subaru opens his eyes and notices that he's on a bed. I'm here. He's awake? You shouldn't move yet. I just closed the wound and you still don't have enough blood. Ferris, how am I here? You can thank Beatrice and that dragon for that. If we had been a little late, you would have been dead. Beatrice and Petrash? Yeah, that's right. I passed out and those guys were... Where are they? Beatrice is sleeping in the next room. The earth dragon is resting behind here. It's been a whole day since Subaru was brought here. I had a hard time. Even if I asked a lot of questions, Beatrice wouldn't answer me at all. She finally told me her name and that she used to know Subaru. So you and Beatrice have never met. She's a librarian of the Forbidden Library at the Roswell Mansion. For 20 years, she's been guarding that place all by herself. 20 years. She didn't seem like she was human, but once I heard she was a spirit, I understood. Anyway, sorry for the hassle and thanks for the help. If you've learned from this, why don't you stop rushing to your death? I have no intention of dying just yet. I still have something I need to do. That's what I call rushing to your death. This is a place for people who value their lives. I can't die. I guess that's why I'm here now. Yes, yes, I'm tired of hearing that line. You're such a troublesome patient. But then again, this time it was really terrible. I was surprised when you came back after having your left arm chopped off a few years ago. This time, it was more than that. If it weren't for Beatrice, you wouldn't have lasted this long. I'm well aware, but I finally got a lead on that guy. 
Hmm, I don't really care about that. It's almost time to open the hospital, so please be quiet. I'm not a kid. I know better. Really, I think the kids who come to my house are much more reasonable than Subaru. Ferris then walks out of the room. Subaru stares at the ceiling of the clinic, his thoughts slowly drifting. You're still slothful, aren't you? Subaru was completely defeated that day, but I'm still alive. As long as you're alive, nothing's over yet. Transcription of the soul, that's what Beatrice said. The stories hit a dead end, there's gotta be a way. If I could just get Beatrice to tell me how to get there. You've always been one to leave the important stuff to others, in fact. Subaru was caught off by Beatrice's arrival. Once you realize you're not strong enough, you'll learn how to give up, I suppose. Beatrice, that's not how it works. That's why I can't. Subaru sits up and clenches his right fist. His head is spinning, but he's still conscious. Beatrice, first let me say thank you for giving me first aid when I was dying in the woods and for bringing me here. If it weren't for you, I would be dead. Really, thank you for saving my life. Gratitude that's shallow isn't worth much, in fact. It's really not shallow, but from the heart. If that's the case, you wouldn't have said first before thanking me, I suppose. After all, you only think about yourself, in fact. Subaru is speechless. Beatrice had hit the nail on the head. Subaru was hoping that Beatrice would help him this time after rejecting him at the mansion. He was trying to coddle her, hoping that she still had the same kindness in her heart from 20 years ago. Nevertheless, I still need your help. Please, this is it. I need your help, Beatrice. I'm aware that I'm just showing up in front of you after all this time and saying things that'll make you feel good. Still, I'm not strong enough to kill him. Are you asking Betty to die with you, I suppose? No, that's not what I meant. If you help me, I will take full responsibility for protecting you. A barrier. Make a barrier, in fact. When the body dies, the soul flies to another vessel to be transferred, I suppose. Confine the soul in the barrier to prevent it, in fact. Can the barrier be set up by you? I don't know if I can, I suppose. Betty doesn't owe you that much, in fact. Beatrice turns her back on Subaru and starts to leave the room. Wait, Beatrice. If you know you're being so selfish, you should try to find a way to help yourself, I suppose. Beatrice. Subaru crawls out of bed trying to follow her, but he has no strength in his legs. He collapses on the floor of the clinic. An angry Ferris opens the door and tells Subaru to shut up. Ferris then notices that Subaru is on the floor and goes to help him. It's okay to have a fight, but could you do it in a place that doesn't bother the others? I apologize for the extra trouble I caused you. But that wasn't a fight. I don't really care what happened between you two, but I think Subaru is the one to blame anyway. Yeah, I guess so. The worst thing you can do is pretend that you're aware of what you're doing. Hey, come on, you don't have to say that much, do you? This is not enough for Subaru, who's in such a hurry to die. You have no idea how much you deserve this. What the hell does that mean? Come on, why don't you put your hand over your heart and think about it? Ferris turns his back on Subaru and walks out of the room. Maybe I'm just begging for something that doesn't exist. Let's not drag Beatrice into this anymore. Now that I've figured out that he's an evil spirit, I have a better idea of what to do. With all this information, I should be able to find a solution. More importantly, I'm still missing something to kill that guy. Subaru looks at his hands that were not strong enough to kill that man. The difference in their power is overwhelming. As a pure force multiplier, I'll need to have a skilled collaborator. To do it, I'll need one. A certain person came to mind. Am I sure I want to do this? But... Subaru recalls the events of that day 20 years ago. I would sell my soul to the devil if it meant killing him. I can't stop. I'm not going to waste any more time. The shackles that held him had already been broken 20 years ago. I am the one who will kill that man. And that sums up chapter 6 of the Aganuif. I am genuinely shocked at the new Ferris. He's so cold and just doesn't give a fuck. He's like the complete opposite of the one that we know in the main story. All of this because he doesn't have his memories of Krush anymore. It's also a bit weird because in the Pride of Ferris becomes a broken mess after Krush dies to the White Whale. It could be a potential plot hole or an oversight. Anyway, I think that Ferris has the potential to be the second most interesting character in this what if and I look forward to seeing more of him. Speaking of interesting characters in this what if, Beatrice is still a pretty big sundere. She constantly tells Subaru how selfish he is and that she doesn't owe him anything, then helps him when he's about to die and tells him how to kill Betelgeuse. Perhaps she will eventually change her mind and make a contract with him. Finally, at the end of this chapter, we were teased with another Subaru vs. Betelgeuse fight. Hopefully this time Subaru will be more prepared and will be able to kill him for good this time. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. With that being said, thank you for watching and I hope you all have a great day.